Picture this. The sky is hazy, and there are wildfires burning all over the planet. The oceans are warming up and releasing methane into the air, which is causing the Earth to get warmer. And more methane is belching forth from the permafrost. Coral reefs are dying, and ex extinction is accelerating everywhere. But take a deep breath, because this is not necessarily what is happening now, but rather what actually happened 252 million years ago in an event known as the Permian Extinction, or the Great Dying. So 95% of all the species on our planet went extinct during that event, yet hardly anybody knows about it or talks about it. This happened before the dinosaurs even were on the planet. And so that's what I want to talk to you about today. There are so many lessons that you can learn about from studying the history of life on our planet and the history of Earth itself. And a lot of these lessons can be applied to some of the problems that we are experiencing today. So as a geologist and a paleontologist, I think about time differently than the average person. I think about it in terms of something known as deep time. So the average person probably thinks about time in terms of human time scales, maybe decades, 100 years, or maybe a few thousand years, the timing of the rise and fall of civilizations. But for a paleontologist, we think about time in terms of hundreds of thousands of years, millions of years, and billions of years. And these kinds of time scales are hard to conceptualize. Humans, because we think on such short time scales, we tend to be rather short-sighted about the uh, kind of impact that we have on our planet. So today, in the short amount of time I have today, I'm going to give you a crash course in Earth history so that you can have a chance to think like a geologist too. Okay, um, just to orient you, on many of the slides here, there will be a time scale at the bottom, just like you see here. On the left-hand side, it's the origin of the Earth 4.56 billion years ago, and then on the right-hand side represents today. And you'll see an arrow moving along as I progress through the slides so you can see where we are in Earth history. So let's start at the very beginning. The Earth formed 4.56 billion years ago in a series of collisions between asteroids colliding together and melting into a huge ball of molten rock in space. There was no atmosphere, there were no oceans, there were no layers inside the Earth, no magnetic field, and yes, there was no life whatsoever. This early Earth was not a hospitable place. So let's fast forward a mere 750 million years to where the Earth is starting to take more form. So we finally got into a temperature below the boiling point of water. So now we have oceans, we have an atmosphere, we have plate tectonics, we have layers inside the Earth that's pulsing forth a magnetic field, and our first evidence that there is life. No fossils yet, but there are biomarkers, little chemicals that tell us that life had probably gained a foothold at this point. Now, I'm going to jump forward another 200 million years, and we have our first definitive fossils. They're not that much to look at. They're kind of blobby layers of bacteria, but they are incredibly important in the history of life. They created our first oxygen, our first photo photosynthesizers, and they have been with us ever since. These creatures, for three billion years, were turning our atmosphere into oxygen, into the kind of air that supports life as we know it today. So let me jump ahead now. Three billion years, we're gonna just jump right in to where we start to see our first multicellular life in the fossil record. There's some little tiny embryos that we find and then some weird creatures like these. They kind of look like quilted feathers or like blobby wrinkled things and we describe them in these kind of funny terms because some of these creatures we don't really know exactly what they are. But what's interesting is that they appear in the fossil record in multiple places around the world and then they go extinct. It's as if life was experimenting and just kind of blinked out of existence. But then we can jump forward 50 more million years, 
and boom, we have an event called the Cambrian Explosion. It's when life kind of figuratively exploded on the scene. There are tons of fossils in the fossil record now. Some of them are familiar, things like clams and snails and sponges, and then there's all kinds of weird stuff like this, and I wish I had time to tell you about each one of them because they're super interesting, but I just wanted to show that, uh, this to you so that you can get a sense that life is weird and fascinating and wonderful, and we can learn so much from it. Um, but I'll just have to move on now. So I'm going to um, move on a couple hundred million years to illustrate that the Earth is still changing. And we have all of these changes in our uh, climate and sea level rising and falling, and glaciers growing and shrinking. Some of them trigger mass extinctions, like one caused by global cooling, another caused by changes in ocean chemistry in um, uh, all over the world. So these kinds of events, when we learn about them in Earth history, they can give us a sense of how the Earth would respond when we do things to it. And so these are the events that we can learn from and apply to how we are changing the planet today. So I'm going to move ahead another few hundred million years to the event that I started this talk with, the Permian extinction, the great dying, where we have volcanoes, unlike any that are going off today, spewing greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, causing warming, and then causing more warming as the oceans lost their methane. And so there's 10 degrees of warming here. This is a great analog for us to study to try to understand what our current situation of climate change is like. So let's move forward now into the time of the dinosaurs. There's two mass extinctions that affected the dinosaurs, one triggered by volcanoes, and then the one that wiped them out entirely, um, the Cretaceous extinction with the asteroid impact. Moving on from there, we have the wild and wonderful world of mammals, all kinds of mammals, whales, bats, giant armadillos, giant ground sloths, and of course the egg-laying platypus. But when we think about mammals, usually what we think about ourselves. Um, we, we often kind of put ourselves at the center of existence with everything on the earth, even though we're part of this grand sweep of time. And I always think it's a good a moment to reflect that we're not necessarily the end point of geologic time either. We just happen to be at the present day. Um, human beings only came on the scene 200,000 years ago, a literal geological blink of an eye. But yet, you can't look out of the air, uh, window of an airplane without seeing the kinds of effects that human beings have had on this planet, whether it's all of the agriculture that we've done or the urbanization that we have had. And then we've also had a huge impact on our ocean chemistry, on our soils, on our atmosphere. So even though the Earth is so old, we, human beings, have had such a huge impact on just a few hundred years. And so we don't really think about how long it takes for a river to carve across a landscape before, boom, we put a dam on it. And we don't think about how long it takes for plankton to be deposited and buried and turned into oil before we extract it from the earth and burn it and turn it into greenhouse gases. We don't think about the native prairie grasses in Nebraska that have been putting their roots deep into the ground and creating soil before we plow it all up and create mega farms of corn. And we don't think about what would happen to the oceans if we spray excess amounts of fertilizer all over the land that washes out into the ocean and changes its chemistry. But we can learn about these things if we study the geologic past. We should think about the actions that we take in terms of geological time, in terms of deep time. Um, and if we choose to ignore the lessons of deep time, we may not have the luxury of any time to do anything about it. Thank you.